Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So we got my M3 over here. It's absolutely filthy. Been driving this car nonstop since I got it tuned and it's just an absolute blast. I uh, went through some rain uh, the other day, a couple, couple different days. So this car definitely, definitely needs a wash. So we're gonna go ahead and wash it up. I figured I'd do wash and talk. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while. So it'll be fun to kind of, um, I don't know, speak what's on my mind while washing the car. And uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and get set up. This is my active 2.0 pressure washer from Obsessed Garage. Um, pretty awesome. I've been really happy with this setup. Obviously you can go with the crazy Krenzel setup, but for me, the 2.0 setup is absolutely perfect. Gets the job done. It was reasonably priced and everything else that we got with the shelf and everything is pretty amazing. Not to mention that the garage is done and everything. So I have the, uh, the plug out there, the outlets, so I don't have to run any wires. Everything's already plugged in, ready to go. All I got to do is turn the water on and we're ready. So let's go ahead and do that. So one thing I always do before I wash and I turn the water on is uh, I always run the water through the, the uh, gun first to get all the air out because if you don't it'll lose pressure when you're cleaning all right so last weekend i actually washed both my truck and my wife's tellurides and i didn't get a chance to wash this i need to put some more in here um, and I've been dying to wash this cause it's never been this dirty under my ownership. <laughs> I'll show you in a little bit, I guess, uh, how dirty it is, but it feels good to spend some time on this now. I love these TE 37s. They're so, not only do they look good, but so easy to clean. Only six spokes comparing to some other wheels that I've had in the past on other cars. These things are an absolute breeze. Although I will say on the, on these, the SLs, the finish is not my favorite. It looks good, but it doesn't, I don't know. The uh, barrels on the inside are really rough. So it kind of holds onto the brake dust more. The matte finish doesn't stain necessarily, but it doesn't look perfect all the time, but I still love them and they still look really good. All right. So I hope this is working because in the midst of the first wheel I was doing, it cut out the audio and then on my the back driver wheel, I had no audio on that. So I'm hoping this one works. <laughs> but what I was talking about over there that didn't record is the upcoming mods for the M3. So what's next for the M3? I have the Bishimoto color match to mineral gray charge cooler, the Arm Motorsports J pipe. I just got in my uh, BMW coolant or antifreeze so I can do that job. I'm going to get that knocked out. Um, I'm also, what else do I have? Oh, I got a, I got a couple uh, interior mods coming. One from MF Interior who did my center console, the uh, Alcantara that everybody loves, that I love. So that is coming in. I got a few pieces from him coming in. Then I also got an OEM BMW part, which I'll probably just do in that same video so you guys can see it. Also, I've been looking into um, short shift kits. So naturally, I went to the one that everyone loves in previous generations, and that's the Auto Solutions. So I reached out to Ronald, who is the owner, and I put my spot in to get in line for a production run to get one made. And I've been talking to him back and forth, going through all the different options and everything. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram, you guys know that I talked about going with the, uh, or possibly going with the CAE or the RTD shifter, which is a little bit more track uh, and race car focused. But I thought it might've been kind of cool to do that in here. But I think at the end of the day, I want to keep it OEM plus and not go too crazy. It's so easy to get out of hand with these cars or any car that I own it for that matter. But um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna go with Auto Solutions. I'm already in line for it. 
production run, I think, is at the end of April, and it's supposed to be done mid-May, so I should have it end of May. Um, but I'm also going to be doing the uh, UCP clutch pedal, the uh, ultimate clutch pedal. I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm just going to do all the drivetrain stuff that I would like to do. Oh, also with the Auto Solution short chip kit, I'm going to do the bushings that they recommend with their kit. So it's going to be really nice, really solid, really notchy. A little bit shorter throw, but not over the top and obnoxious. It's going to be really, really nice. I heard such great things about that company and those short shift kits. So probably need to go with that. And then the ultimate clutch pedal. So I'm kind of looking to shorten the travel of the F80 clutch pedal. So that should do the trick. So I'm going to do all that stuff probably at once just to kind of knock two things out with one stone and get that all handled and situated. So that should be a really nice set of mods. All right, so the last wheel that I did started cutting out again towards the end of the clip. So hopefully this is recording. I don't know what's going on. I think it's uh, my wireless is kind of acting up, but I wanted to show you this before we get started, just how dirty the car is. Like I said, I've been driving this through the rain and just driving it a lot. So it's pretty darn filthy. It's the dirtiest it's ever been under my ownership. So I can't wait to wash this up, but I wanted to mention, I know a lot of people always ask anytime I wash in here, how do you wash in the garage? Swiss tracks actually has channels underneath each tile. So all the water just kind of runs through and out to the driveway. And also my garage slab is properly sloped. So when the water gets there, it just kind of runs out, goes to the driveway. Right now I'm washing at night. So by morning, the floor will be completely dry. If I'm washing during the day by nighttime, especially in the summer when it's much warmer out, it just dries totally by nighttime. So that's how I do it. Works well, been doing that in here for the past 10 plus years or so and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. So that is how I wash, especially with the new garage. It's pretty amazing. And um, I love washing in here. I got the heat on, got some music playing when I'm not recording, <laughs> but uh, it's a nice place to wash. So uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna open up the garage door because when I spray, don't wanna get the door wet. Um, also another thing, people always ask, how do you spray in here without getting the walls wet? Really simple, you just kinda wanna spray out towards the door. You don't wanna spray directly at the car because then it'll get the walls. I used to work at a detail shop back when I was younger. It's kind of where I learned a lot of my car washing techniques and uh, knowledge and everything. Uh, we used to work around a lot of high-end cars getting detailed. So when a car came in to get washed or detailed, we had to be really careful about not getting other things wet. So it's kind of where I learned that technique, but just want to wash out, not directly at it. And you don't even come close to the wall. So let's go ahead, let's get this sprayed down. We'll get it foamed up and then we can continue on with the washing thing. So if anybody's curious about the ratios that I do for the soap. Now the soap that I use is Kotchemi. I used to use uh, GSF actually, which is over here. I have a whole um, gallon of it, but this was the special one, the GFX, which was the Christmas special one. It smells like uh, Christmas trees or pine needles, but same thing, just different scent. But uh, if you look on the MTM foam cannon, there's three dashes right here. So one, two, three, I fell up to the third one. Sometimes I fill it up to the fourth if it's really dirty, so I'm gonna do that right now. It's a lot of soap, but it gets a good foam uh, on the car, so. I already have my buckets filled up as well, but kind of hard to see. I have it up to the fourth line right there, and I go over to my buckets, fill it up, and we can foam. All right, so the car has been foamed. It's been sitting for about five, 10 minutes or so. Usually I let it run off as much as possible and then uh, we can get washing, but the car is pretty dirty. So I let it sit for a little bit longer than normal. But uh, yeah, I really like this garage. <laughs> 
So as you saw, I sprayed it with the door closed. Um, it's really easy to do that. Obviously I got the door a little bit, uh, but I just wiped it off, super simple. But with the foam, you know, it kind of sprays everywhere. So I open that up when I do that. But uh, close it down. Again, it's 60, almost 70 in here right now. And it's like 42 out, <laughs> even with the door open, which is pretty nice. But uh, yeah, so let's get to washing. I have my buckets here, uh, soap and rinse bucket. But I just start from the top, kind of the panels facing up. I usually start with those. So the roof, the glass, the windshield, the back window, hood and trunk. And then I kind of work my way down. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to discuss kind of briefly um, my recent idea. <laughs> And what I mean by that is my obsession with the Honda FL5 Type R. So I did a little review on my friends. Um, he was very, very kind and allowed me to drive that car. I only had like 300 something miles on it. So very, very new. He just got it like two weeks prior to me driving it. So thank you, Mike. But I've been obsessed with them ever since they came out. I've always enjoyed the way that they look and just all the reviews and everything I've been hearing about them have been A plus. Everyone says it's an amazing car. So uh, I, you know, I had that in my mind, but then driving one, it just, I don't know. It put a huge smile on my face and it was a car that I can definitely see myself enjoying and driving and owning. It's almost, people are saying it's like a baby Porsche, which, Sounds crazy, but if you drive one, <laughs> I completely understood what they were talking about. It really, really is. It's a bargain baby Porsche. Granted, very different drivetrain and everything, but it makes sense. It handles crazy well. It's just a really good car. So the reason why I'm talking about that is because I've had this crazy scheme in my mind <laughs> of selling the truck and replacing it with a FL5 Type R. Now it's kind of completely opposite of what my current daily driver is, which is the F150, but I don't know, man. <laughs> Something about it is kind of speaking to me and I would love to own one. I think it'd be really fun to drive every day and kind of see if it's really truly a great daily driver, a good everyday type of car. But I don't know. I kind of go back and forth on the idea. The truck is just so practical for my life at the moment. You know, with having three kids and being a, uh, a homeowner and everything, and obviously a car enthusiast, constantly picking up car parts and all that stuff. It's really nice to have the bed of the truck to do that kind of stuff. But we still do have my wife's Telluride. And, you know, that can easily handle the stuff that I do in the truck. Um, so I don't know. I'm back and forth on it and I kind of put a I don't want to say a feeler but I was testing the waters a little bit putting my truck up on my Instagram saying like hey is anybody interested and I did get quite a few people reaching out but you know how that goes you know nobody's 100% ready to, to buy it they just say like yeah I'm interested but I gotta do this first I gotta do that first so I don't know I made chicken out because <laughs> I really I truly do love the truck and it there's no reason for me to sell it other than just me wanting the type, the uh, type R, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I know everyone's going to say yes, just because they want to see a type R on the channel, <laughs> but I don't know. It's a pretty big commitment to do that. You know, selling such a great vehicle that works very well for my life at the moment to get something, I don't want to say less practical, but not as practical as the truck just because you know the the type r it's a four seater although i believe the euro versions are a five seater and you can get a the uh, middle seat bench or seat put in it's pretty simple i think the difference is you just need the uh, the seat belt for the middle seat but i don't know I guess that's just uh, the car enthusiasts and me trying to figure out a way to get a new Type R. So what do you guys think? I have already expressed what color I really like. I'm, I'm a big fan of it in red, which I believe is called Rally Red. I forget. 
but it's not as popular. It's actually pretty rare to get one in red, but there's actually a couple not too far from me. So I don't know, but I guess if anybody's interested in my truck, let me know. <laughs> Maybe it'll push me over the edge if uh, one of you are super interested in it and can get something worked out. I own the truck, so it's not, you know, super easy transaction, but we will see. Now this car is PPF, pretty much the entire car. So the entire front clip, including the headlights, uh, A, B pillars, the side skirts, roof, um, the uh, rear bumper, lots of things are PPF. Um, and I have been thinking about doing a paint correction on here at least just doing like a quick jeweling, I guess, if you want to call it of the PPF and then do a uh, new ceramic on it. G Technic CSL and XO V5 now. So I'm thinking about doing that or I might just take the PPF completely off and just rock it with no PPF. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but either way, I may just do a kind of refresh of the paint or of the uh, ceramic coating just to get a fresh layer on there because I got the car previous owner got it done the PPF and the ceramic coating so and still holding up well plus with paired with the uh, obsessed garage drying aid it does a really good job just keeping the coating you know in good shape so I really don't have a need for it but but I think it would be a fun series kind of getting the uh, car dialed back in not that it's not I have to do the truck as well I'd really like to get the truck kind of corrected it's in good shape but it can definitely good use a good polish it's never been ceramic coated I just top it with a uh, obsessed garage drying aid but it's been holding up well but it's definitely in not the best shape not my standards so I'll probably do that if I get some time it's just tough because that thing is so massive so the back of this car is absolutely filthy it's the worst part about the car right now but nothing a good wash can't fix. <laughs> and yes, I know a lot of people ask me about the black jersey plate. No, it's not state issued. No, it's technically not legal. And stop asking me where I got it from because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But all I'm going to say is if you want one, just search Google black jersey license plate. And you can find a couple different places that do it. So... I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm not going to tell you where I got it just because I don't want to, anybody to point fingers at me saying, Hey, I got pulled over and you know, I don't want to get blamed for anything in other words. <laughs> so at your own discretion, search on Google, you can find them it's for any state and you'll be able to get what you want and go from there. But yeah, stop asking me about that. All right, so I already blew off the car, got it all set. I'm just using some Obsessed Garage drying aid. I use the uh, drying aid towel, and then I follow up with this larger towel to wipe off uh, any of the excess. It seems to do the job pretty darn well. And uh, I've been really happy with the OG drying aid. I used to use Beadmaker. I used to swear on that stuff, but as time progressed, I tried out OG. And I liked it better because it didn't dust as much as Beadmaker. Beadmaker's still really good. I still like it, but I find myself not ever using that since I went to the Obsessed Garage drying aid, which has been about, I would say two years now. So I guess you can say that I'm solely an Obsessed Garage drying aid user. And I've given the uh, Beadmaker the boot. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the whole car down with some drying aid get it all ready to go and I'm just gonna wipe down the interior it doesn't really get that dirty but uh, just do a quick wipe down with some PNS interior cleaner get the tires dressed and we should be good to go so once I get the car kind of finished up I'll catch back up with you guys and uh, wrap the video up
So yeah, guys, car wash is complete. Everything is finished. We got the car back up to standards. It was absolutely filthy and I'm so pleased to see it clean again. Just makes this car feel and look so much better. We got the new uh, exhaust tips back there and everything. The car is just looking so, so good. So I'm actually, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to get it cleaned up tonight is because my family and I, my kids and everything, we're actually headed off to Disney tomorrow. And I wanted to get the car cleaned up, put the uh, trickle charger on, cover it up and just have it sit here for the time that we're gone. So it's ready to roll when I get back and can enjoy it. So that was one of my main goals of getting this car cleaned up tonight. Otherwise, I probably would have waited for the weekend. By the time this airs, we're already be back and everything. So uh, I'll probably be driving it by the time this video comes out. But yeah, so there we go. Fun little wash and talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you guys are interested in any of the products that I use on my car that I used in this wash, they are all in the links below. So if you're interested in picking any of those up, you most certainly can and you can use the links below. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple. I'll catch you guys in the next one.